Hey, welcome, welcome um, to another tutorial with yours truly. Uh, basically, I just throw one of these together every time I run into um, an issue I'm trying to solve that doesn't already have a great um, tutorial for it. So that's what it is. So um, I'm just going to show you quickly the end result here. Uh, here's the epic kid who I like to pick on. Um, and, you know, basically I wanted to change just a part of his clothing. Um, and, you know, say I wanted to change his arms to uh, turquoise. So here's what the end result looks like. Boom. Um, once that's compiled, there. We just changed his arms um, from red to turquoise and didn't affect any of the other... Um, any of the assets on his body and didn't have to change, you know, make any major changes to the way the material is constructed, uh, whatnot. Now, you know, with basic materials, there is a very simplistic way to change the color. Um, so maybe I'll just back up and talk about that a little bit before I show you how to do exactly what I just did here. Um, the other thing I'll mention, and, and this is similar with a, a lot of my tutorials, is in order to do this, um, we're actually going to export uh, some items out of uh, Unreal, and we're going to manipulate them in uh, GIMP, the 2D editing software. So if you don't have GIMP, just grab it from um, the link below in the description, um, and then you'll be able to follow, follow along, no problem. Um, okay, so uh, we've got the Epic Kid here. Um, you know, and, and say we just wanted to apply a different color. So I'm just going to switch this back to his red arms. Uh, apply that out. And you could be saying if you if you know materials, um, you could already be saying that, you know, you can just manipulate the color um, within the base color for, for a lot of different materials. That works good when you have like one flat um, texture behind. And the way that you would do that is... Um, just basically manipulating the the base color. So I'll just show you quickly how to do that and what the problems are with this type of um, Texture file. So if I just hit three hold down the three button and then left click I'll get this little color wheel um, uh, Widget and then also if I hit the hold the M key on my keyboard and then left click um, It'll give me a multiply node and so what I can do is I can actually go into this color node um, you know, I can pick, let's just find a, a turquoise color, um, put the sliders both at the top so that, you know, you can see you're going from old uh, to new here. You're going to this turquoise color. Um, and then you've got a turquoise color in there. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to multiply that with what's already going into our base color um, and just kind of reflect um, adding turquoise to the overall um Material. So if we apply it and save that, we'll just go back into the scene and you can see what happened. Sure, I affected the color, but I affected the color to the entire um, to the entire 3D object, and that's not what we're trying to do. Now he looks like green, and it really looks just look like um, I threw him in a, a vat of um, some sort of tie dye or something. Um, Anyways, uh, so that's one way to do it with a, a flat material, but for this particular instance, it doesn't really work. So let's just go back in and, and delete out those nodes, um, hook everything back up the way that it's supposed to be. And then we'll go through the way um, that I manipulated the color. Um, so uh, let's just start by looking at the, um, the asset that we're trying to manipulate, you're going to have to try and figure out, okay, what part of the uh, materials are associated to the color that you want to change. So in our case here, where I wanted to change the color of the sleeves for the Epic Kid, um, you could tell that the cloth shader here is likely the one that's creating his shirt and his arms. Um, may not always be straightforward, but in our case, that's what um, we're looking for. Um, we don't want the cloth instance. We actually want the master material here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this. We're going to navigate around and find, oops, why is it not working? There we go. Uh, we're going to navigate and find the, the main texture. And again, here's the te texture sample that it's obviously using um, to shade. And then we're just going to go and find that in our um, navigation scene. You can see that I've already done this. And I've already created the texture and, and overlaid it with uh, with turquoise, and, and that's how I got the effect. So to, in order to do this, we'll replicate that. 
um, I'm just going to right click on the texture file, asset actions, and then I'm going to export it. Um, and then we're just going to name this color map. So last one was turquoise, original is red. Let's make it, mm, I don't know, let's make it white. Is that a good one? Or let's make it, yeah, let's make it like an orangey color. How about that? Cool. Let's save that. Uh, and that's exact, that's now we've exported that file outside of uh, Unreal. And then this is where we need uh, GIMP. So we're going to open up GIMP. And then within GIMP, we're going to go to File, Open, that um, that new file we just created. So it should be Epic Kid um, Orange. I'm just going to navigate to that. Do, 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 do. Here it is, Orange. And we'll open up the file. And then you can tell right away the red parts of his shirt are obviously these red sections here. Um, the gray is the other parts of his shirt, jeans, that sort of thing. So we want to isolate the red in his shirt. So how do we do that? Well, within um, you know GIMP, uh, you have this little tool up here called the Fuzzy Select tool. So we want to highlight that. Um, and what this does is it, it just uses a little bit of, um, I don't know, computer science in the background. Um, if you left click on an object, then it will automatically select it for you. So in this case, it sort of used this fuzzy tool to kind of figure out, okay, you want all of the red in this section, so I'm gonna do my best effort to try and get all the red. But you can see it's not quite perfect. Um, so if you just open GIMP for the first time, what I would recommend is with this fuzzy tool selected, there's this threshold setting. Um, and you can dial this up and down. And what that does is it basically says, you know, find a like color or material or looking uh, object on the 2D image and then match it um, and select it all. This threshold allows you to adjust the threshold for what the system considers um, like. So if we cranked the threshold radius all the way up and we selected something, it's just going to select the entire object. So it selected the whole thing because with the threshold is so high, there's really no uh, delineation between what's red, what's gray, and, and the different textures. So uh, playing around with this, I found that for this purpose, um, 20 a threshold of 20 uh, is about right. So I'm just going to set it right at 20. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on the red that we want to select. And uh, it isn't perfect. You can zoom in with plus on your keyboard, and then you can just use the mouse wheel and the third mouse button to kind of drag your image around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to select these areas that weren't selected on the first go around. So basically, the shift is just adding onto your original selection. And you can already see it's now selected much better than it was before. And I'm just going to clean it up by selecting um, the remaining sections. So with three clicks there, I now have the red um, isolated. Um, you'll notice though it didn't select down here. So I'm also going to shift and left click down here and then go through the same process. Just shift click, shift click. Um, I can see it missed this outer rim. Oops. It's now gone uh, a little bit too far outside. So I'm just going to zoom in with the plus key on my number pad. And I'm going to, I think, control. Yeah. So if you look, if you, if I just show you quickly, if you hit shift, you'll see a little plus icon show up. That means you're going to add to your selection. If I hit control, a little minus uh, sign shows up. That means you're going to take away from your selection. So I just minus click there, minus click there, and then we'll try and do this again. See if it'll learn. It wasn't as finicky the last time that I did this, but maybe I just didn't notice it was selected. Eventually, it should kind of sort itself out. There, there we go. Just played around. Um, I'm not liking that edge. What is going on? There we go. So good enough. I mean, you can play around with the tool uh, a little bit to get it perfect. Um, but for the purposes of this, what we're trying to do, I think it's primarily pretty good. Boom. Um, and you know you could you could get out of this completely reset and, and try again and, and sort of mess around with the threshold and and get it perfect. Um, but for the most part, we've selected the red, and now we want to switch that to another color. So what, the way that we can do that is with our um, red isolated, we can go up to colors, 
and we can go down to colorize and you can see obviously with the color that I um, showed you at the beginning I was lazy and I just picked turquoise off the bat so um, let's change this to orange and kind of see what happens that's a little too bright uh, yeah maybe somewhere in there so let's go with that orange um, we can probably adjust the settings here a little bit. Uh, saturation maybe down some. Yeah, and that's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Um, you know, you can play with this to your heart's content, same as anything else. Um, I don't want it to get... Yeah, let's go with that like yellowy orange sort of color. Okay, um, so we do that, and then we just go back up to File, Export as... Um, again, it's a TGA file. I'm going to leave it as, as the same name, so the orange. Uh, replace it, sure, no problem. Uh, standard settings are fine, so we'll just hit export. And then we're done in GIMP. Um, and we can go back to Unreal. Um, we can right click, import, uh, navigate to the file we just made. That should be here. Epic Kid Orange. Here we go. And now that's been loaded back into Unreal. We can navigate to the material uh, that he's using, um, go to the master material, and then in here we can actually just swap this out to our orange setting, click apply, and we should have an orange arm kit. There you go. Just like that. So pretty, um, pretty neat, quick little way um, to be able to adjust individual colors. Um, you kind of get the point there too, is you could, you know, you could play around with eye color, hair color. Um, you could change the way the face looks um, with that mapping and, and messing around in GIMP. So, um, anyways, I, I thought that was a pretty cool little thing that maybe not everybody would know. Um, took me a little bit of time to figure it out, but um, now that we've done it, it's uh, it's done. So. Uh, stick around, like, subscribe to the channel. If there's other things that you want to learn or try out or challenge me with, um, hit me up in the comments and uh, we'll keep learning together. So, that's it.